Okay, so today I have another car to introduce, and as you can see behind me, I can't even block it like I can the Corvette. It is my Hummer H3. It has a 5.3 liter, essentially like a Vortec V8. It's the L, uh, what is it? The LH8, which is all aluminum, 5.3 liter, 8 to 1 compression. But it doesn't have displacement on demand and it doesn't have variable valve timing or any of those crazy controls. It's just a basic nuts and bolts LS engine. So it's got 160, almost 165,000 miles on it. I've been, I've been driving it almost exclusively since I moved out here. I do drive my Corvette every once in a while, especially when I need to move it and I realize how much fun it is to drive. And then I'll go several weeks driving the Corvette. But for the most part, I love this thing. It's, it's great, it's comfortable, it's got leather interior, great sound system, the Monsoon sound system is really good for a stock radio. But fairly recently, it's had the same exact problem that the Corvette has, where the radiator cracked and it is slowly leaking. So I went and ordered an all aluminum radiator and we're gonna put it in today. This thing's a lot bigger than the Corvette. <laughs> I don't know where it's leaking from. Just had an issue recently where the transmission line was leaking down there at the radiator. But then it started leaking coolant. I don't know exactly where it's coming from. I'm gonna have to find that. So, it's time to get to it, I guess. All right, so all we gotta move, take out is this forward plate here. This rear plate is gonna have to come out. That's underneath the engine, the oil and stuff like that. Some Yahoo removed the two bolts that go there. So the only thing that's holding this plate in is just these Phillips head screwdrivers right here. So when those two things come out, this pan comes down, you know, and it's it's freaking heavy. So I have two hands to do this. You gotta grab the, the biggest Phillips you've got in the drawer and knock these suckers loose. So if they're in there pretty good. I've had this thing off a couple times now. One thing that complicates matters a little bit is on the top of this bolt that goes through this hole right here, back side of that plate, you've got it's not right there with a washer on it. So you have to reach your arm up on top of the plate to get a socket wrench in there to be able to hold on to that bolt while you're undoing this one. And it's kind of a pain, but uh, it comes out pretty easily once you get your arm up in there. So now I gotta do the other side. Okay, now that we got this off, you can see. It's leaking pretty bad. There's, there's coolant everywhere underneath here. So I don't know exactly where it's leaking from still, but it really is everywhere. So the next thing, got these transmission cooler lines that are up in there. Those transmission cooler lines gotta come out of the radiator, be pulled to the side. There's a transmission line that I replaced just recently that was leaking. That hose clamp right there, that line was leaking. So it might still be leaking or is that coolant coming out of there? I don't know. Man, there's coolant all over the place. Well, really. All right, much more to do. Okay, so this is not like the videos I saw online for this. I have this piece right here that was on this pin and I took the bolt out of there and pulled that off. Now, I'm looking down in here and the radiator now is, is pretty much loose. Like it's ready to come out of there. But, but it's still attached to the AC condenser. So I'm gonna have to unbolt that. This is not, this is starting to not look like uh, the videos that I saw online for it. I had this uh, condenser hose right here, AC hose, that went up and over, was held into the fan shroud by two clips here and down here. Um, most of the videos I saw, there's like this slider that you can grab from down there and slide up and over and then the whole shroud comes off but this one i can't i can't see that it has that there's like a it's like a tab down here this tab right here and i don't think that's it but the fan shroud i don't know how that's going to come out to be honest to be quite honest i don't really know what i'm doing as far as underneath goes, the two transmission lines were just like the videos that I watched where you pull the clip out of them, uh, both the transmission lines. One of them was pretty tough to get out of there. They were corroded, rusted in there pretty good. Next up, I think I'm gonna pull off this right here. 
and see if I can see what's underneath that. See how the condenser is attached to the radiator. Because right now, this, this thing ain't coming out. With the condenser attached to it and the fan shroud attached to it, there, there, there ain't no way, as they say. So I'm going to pull this off and see what I can't see underneath it. So taking this out is not going to be a thing because it goes all the way down to down here. And the way it's shaped, there, I don't think there's any way that it's coming up out of there without removing the whole... Uh, front grill. So we're going to go ahead and just leave that on for now and see if we can't get it <laughs> done another way. I mean, it looks pretty loose. It's like almost like I can just freaking pull it out right now. All right. So <laughs> like I said, I couldn't get this off. <sighs> I got the fan shroud finally loose off these thing. There was this clip down here. This tab right here had to be pushed that way to then be released from this so then the whole fan shroud could pull up and off and then it was secured on the bottom on those two little uh, rings down there there's a, a ring on the right drop it on the right rather and then on the left same thing down there I don't know if you can see that but either way once you get the fan shroud loose then I took the intake off also then you can push the radiator forward quite a bit more and it exposes these two bolts 10 millimeter right there, and then on this side, 10 millimeter right there. So those are for the condenser. I don't know if there's any even lower than that. I'm gonna have to look, but um, I'm hoping those are the only two bolts that are holding the condenser on. Otherwise, this is gonna be really difficult. Okay, so we found our leak. <clears throat> it's coming out of the top of the radiator right here. That seal is leaking, it looks like. I think it's this corner right here because there's a lot of liquid right there so there's two bolts on the top that hold in the air conditioning condenser and I've got it loose on this left side Ew, there's a bug there yuck and on the right side I'm trying to pull this bolt out <laughs> really hard to to get out of there and it's it's a difficult angle there's not much room and then when I pull this other bolt I realize why thread locker blue I don't know that that's necessary for the AC condenser to the radiator to have thread locker on it, but fair enough. Makes things a little bit more difficult for me, but at least now I know why the other bolt's so difficult to get out. So as soon as I pull that bolt out, that second one, I should be able to lift the radiator uh, completely out of there. Everything's off, so I'm gonna try and lift it out now and see if it catches on anything. I hope it doesn't. It looks like, oh man, that condenser I think is on some tabs on the bottom. Condenser is independent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the condenser is stuck in a tab down here on this side. Uh, man, GM, they love their tabs. The tabs that hook everything together. There we go. Okay, that's fully out now. This side. Oh! I had it all unclipped, and this side, the fan shroud popped back in. To its clip, so uh, man, not cool, not cool. Okay, okay, fan shroud is now released again. So let's try this again. Fan shroud down out of the way, AC condenser out of the way. Oh, buddy! Oh, buddy! Oh, easy, easy. Oh, I can hear it scraping against the condenser. What's it caught on? Clips are caught on the fan shroud. And it's caught on the fan. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's hooked on everything. Come on, buddy, get out of there. Uh, Jeez. Okay, so it looks like a new radiator. Put these clips in and then it has these two holes for the transmission cooler and it came with these brand new push lock fittings. I uh, got the rubber grommets off of the old radiator. They went right down here. I think got everything done that I need to get done. So let's go ahead and try to very gingerly Lower this thing in here, hopefully 
don't run into any issues. Man, I could really use somebody to hold that back. <laughs> oh my gosh. This thing's quite a bit thicker. What was that? What was that? Oh, it was that bolt that was right there. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Found it. No big deal. I'll grab that in a second. Oh, this thing's going to hang up on everything. Holy crap. <laughs> that sounds really terrible, but it's not that bad. I promise. I know it sounds bad. Ugh. There it is. There it is. Not surprisingly, fit and finish is not OEM. The air conditioning condenser uh, doesn't line up with the holes on that side. It barely lines up with the holes on that side. But there's nothing to bolt it to anyway. Um, the condenser is pretty close to the top of this little ridge here and on top of that if you can see right there this bottoms out on that right there when you put this over that pin to hold it in place it has it stuck right up against that piece of metal right there that is not gonna fly there's no way because that sheet metal will cut straight through that aluminum radiator and it will start leaking and I'll have a problem all over again so what I've decided to do Let's take this little piece of rubber, and it's going to serve two purposes. It's going to go in between here and keep that aluminum radiator off of that steel piece of sheet metal. And it will eventually get cut through, but I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. And the secondary function it will serve is to take the air conditioning condenser... And hopefully it will hold it down so that it will never come out of the tabs that's uh, that are holding it on. And this piece right here should cinch that down nicely and hold the rubber in place. So that's the plan I'm going to go with. I also cannot get the fan shroud to line up exactly right. The tabs don't line up. I mean, they line up but then the plastic does not go in there the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna keep sawing away at this and should have it done here. Actually, it's starting to come together now, so it should be done pretty soon. Okay, so for the most part, it's all back together. So I'm going to start it up with whatever coolant that's in it right now and gonna take a look underneath and see if it leaks any transmission fluid. If it doesn't leak any transmission fluid, I'm gonna run up to the auto parts store. I'm gonna get some orange coolant and come back here and fill this thing up. Other than that, it doesn't fit, but it worked. <laughs> so I'm just hoping, I'm just really hoping that it doesn't leak. So let's fire it up and see what happens. Yeah, that one right there, I'm worried about. This one over here, I don't think so, it's gonna leak, but that one I was particularly worried about. It doesn't look like it's spraying. Not good for the water pump to run without any coolant. All we got left, I put coolant in the radiator and in the reservoir. Both caps are still off. So getting ready to start up right now and see what happens. It doesn't seem to be leaking so far. The good news is I, won't, I don't see anything leaking, but then it's not under pressure yet. So go ahead and top up the radiator. And there it is, folks. Armor Ace 3 aluminum radiator. Looking good so far. Extra parts. This is my signature. You know, if things are zip tied with multicolored bright neon zip ties, you'll know that I worked on it. Okay, we're gonna back it out. It snowed a little bit while I was working on this thing. good thing about that is is that when I park the Hummer out here I'll definitely be able to see if it's leaking or not. Let's 
go take it for a drive, warm it up a little bit. Bad news, kids. Just got back from a little romp in the snow, and it's leaking coolant. And it was coming from underneath the engine, which it wasn't leaking from under there before. So I went and took a peek around the engine bay, and it turns out that the water pump is now leaking. I don't know if uh, the seals got messed up from running it without coolant in it for that minute or so um it could be that the water pump was on its way out and that that was just the last straw or it could have been leaking also i suppose uh and just not been as apparent as the radiator leak uh, but i definitely know the radiator was leaking so i didn't just fix the wrong problem which is something i've definitely done before <clears throat> just throwing parts and stuff but that was a lot of fun going for a little run in the mud have my daughter with me that's good stuff. What a mess. <laughs> so, this is as far as I've got it apart. Got the water pump out there. New water pump's about to go in. My garage just gets so unbelievably cluttered so fast with parts and, oh, just all this stuff. I've got welding stuff mixed into the table with all the sockets I've used for this water pump right now. I'm Oh, there's the dead water pump right there. But anyhow, so I'm gonna get back at this and hopefully have it done by today. The original bolts that came out of the thermostat housing are a little bit corroded. And so, I don't know if, uh, if you saw the video, but when I put the headlights in, uh, the tight car, I had this uh, bag of leftover hardware. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a washer and this stainless hardware in there because the threads are much nicer and they're, they're not trying to cross thread like these are. I put the thermostat housing on and I was trying to tighten it down and it was just, man, they just didn't want to go in there. And the last thing I want to do, once I got the water pump already in there and bolted up, the last thing I want to do is freaking strip out the thermostat housing. So we're going to put these in and they should work pretty well. And that is it for this video. Kind of a bummer. Sometimes those things happen, it's no big deal. Gonna have to get back to the Tide Car stuff here pretty soon. But in any event, thank you so much for watching. If you guys are enjoying my videos, please subscribe and I will see you next time.